In this video, we're going to discuss the differences in MATLAB and C++ when it comes to certain mathematical operations. In C++, exponentiation, working with complex numbers, and working with things like dividing by zero were typically a little more difficult than they would be, say, if you were doing it on paper. Now, MATLAB is designed for mathematical and scientific computing, and as a result, it allows us to do these operations much, much easier. So the first thing we'll do is exponentiate, x to the power of y. If you remember from the previous video, I created two variables, x and y. In case you don't, let's remake them. Let's make x5 and y9. Now I could have used semicolons there, because I didn't really need to see the output. There wasn't much calculation. I left it in so you could see. If I want to compute the power of x to the power of 9, then I can use what we call a chevron, or an exponentiation operator. In your keyboard, it's shift and then 6. x, shift, 6, y. x to the power of y. And we get a very large number. We'll have to trust MATLAB on this. Now, in C++, this was very different. You had to use the actual POW function, and it would be POW brackets x comma y. In MATLAB, remember, it's designed to make things easy. Now, I have a bunch of stuff on my screen, and I want to get it off. I don't want to delete the variables, though. So I use the MATLAB command CLC for clear console. All it does is remove what's on the screen, but it still keeps your variables. I'll show you. CLC removes the screen, but if I type x, it's still equal to 5. Let's CLC again. In C++, there were certain things that when you did them, they would cause, if not errors, then strange values to crop up. For example, if I divide by 0. MATLAB allows you to do that. But one important thing to notice is that MATLAB doesn't warn you that it did so. As a result, if you do a calculation and you accidentally divide by 0, then you won't know until your calculation is done running. MATLAB gives you the special constant INF for infinity when you do things like divide by zero. One over zero, and we're going to get infinity. MATLAB also lets you do things that are generally undefined, and you should really experiment to see what MATLAB does. For example, what would zero to the power of zero be? MATLAB considers that to be one. So be careful because MATLAB might do something that you don't necessarily agree with, or it might do something differently from what you expect. The next thing is that MATLAB is designed to work with real numbers and also complex ones. In C++, you simply could not take the square root of a negative number. You'd get the special constant NAN for not a number. In MATLAB, you can do that all you want. And MATLAB can handle complex numbers as easily as it handles real numbers. For example, if I want to take the square root of negative 2, then I can use the power operator. Let's do that. Now, if I want to take the square root of a negative number, I really should be using brackets. Just like in C++, brackets work the same way. If I put bracket negative 2, oh, negative 2, and then exponentiated to the 1 half to take a square root. So another bracket, 1 over 2, or 0.5, and I hit enter, then I'll end up with the square root of negative 2, which is in fact a complex number with no real part, and an imaginary part of 1.4142 times i. If I wanted to just create a complex number, I'd do it using that special variable i. Let's say that I want a variable c, and it's 3 plus 4, then i. No times, although you could use times if you wanted to. If I now hit enter, I get a variable that is complex. I can do whatever you can imagine with complex numbers. For example, I can divide them. Let's make a new complex number and see what that looks like. So I have a new complex number, and let's do the division of c over d. And what I get is the division of those two complex numbers. I'll leave it to you to verify that is correct. You can look more into how to work with complex numbers in MATLAB on your own. In this course, we're not going to be using them too much. But for things, for example, like circuits analysis, you might consider using MATLAB for that. 
One final thing I should mention. The variable i is a very special one in MATLAB. It represents the complex unit. However, you can redefine it. If you do so, then MATLAB will have trouble working with complex numbers. For example, if I say i equals to 4, then the number 2 plus 2 times i is in fact 10. It doesn't treat that i as though it's a complex unit. In general, I'd be very careful with using the variable i. You can use anything else, and if you need a variable to say index a for loop, perhaps use j. Be careful with i only because MATLAB has it specially reserved.